Just when you thought a space whale was crazy enough, you learn it can warp the very fabric of space-time. What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the mysterious Purgle species. Their homeworld is unknown, and they very well might not even come from a particular planet. If you take a close look at its pale blue-green eyes, you can see a pupil, and what looks to be the strips of starlight that you see when you go through hyperspace. Its mouth is full of rounded teeth, and there are these small spikes on the top of its head, followed by a dorsal fin. Every purgle has four squid-like tentacles, and these stingray-like side wings. With age brings a change of color, and a growth of barbell-like protrusions, in addition to wrinkles that form on their head. They are extremely intelligent, and are able to detect leaders of groups, evidenced when one sought out the mining operation manager and dragged him into a cloud of Clauson 36 gas. This gas was needed by the Purgle to charge up their natural hyperspace jumping ability. Interesting considering that we know of other natural resources like coaxium, which are also used as a hyperfuel. These fuels are classified as forms of hypermatter, which you could find in abundant forms in some asteroid belts, and even in the core of planets found in the Red Hern system. The Death Star was able to weaponize hyperfuel for its main laser, and though there is no evidence that the Purgle could shoot laser beams, it is interesting to wonder if it could use the hyperfuel for more than just travel. What's really odd is how this creature gets around. If you look close, you can see tentacles could be used to manipulate objects and even grab onto stuff, but I'm not sure how it moves in the vacuum of space. As you can see, it is actually quite agile, being able to turn and reposition quickly. With the space worm the Exegorth, we saw that it could travel to distant star systems by making incredibly accurate calculations and launching itself at the perfect moment. But it could not change its direction in space once it pushed off. The Pergil is able to turn in empty space, which as crazy as this sounds, must mean that it is subtly warping space-time around it. That might seem ridiculous, but remember we are talking about an animal that can travel through hyperspace. In Star Wars, you don't get into hyperspace by just going really fast. A hyperdrive sends out hypermatter in front of the ship to allow it to go faster than the speed of light, which would break all kinds of rules of physics, so it forces your vehicle to slip into a separate dimension. This dimension is called hyperspace, in which objects can move faster than light does in normal space. Hyperspace has been a separate dimension in Legends, and has remained so in canon. So if the Purgle can go into hyperspace, it is necessarily doing something to the fabric of space. So it is really crazy to think that these tentacles and these stingray-like wings are able to move space-time around it, pushing against the very fabric of reality as easily as a sea creature would push against water. Flailing around in space shouldn't propel you in one direction or another, so besides this space warping option, I really don't see how it could get around. Independent of how you might feel about animals that can do this in Star Wars, I think it is pretty cool that we can make these two bits of information fit together. As for its history, the Purgil is perhaps the most important species in the history of the galaxy. Sounds like a bold claim, but the hyperdrive invention was made from early space explorers who watched the Purgil. Perhaps by tracking them, or just by dumb luck they were able to see them refueling at a gas cloud, helping these researchers figure out that it was this matter that allowed them to enter hyperspace. Next, they just had to make a machine that accelerated this hypermatter out, and you had yourself the galaxy's first hyperdrive. To use this map for an example, in pre-hyperdrive times, the best method for far-off space exploration was cryo-freezing, which took things called generation ships hundreds of years to go from Coruscant to Anaxis. With this Purgle-inspired tech, one could cross the entire galaxy within a single day. Ironically, spacers would grow to hate the Purgle, and even shoot them on sight, because these lumbering menaces accidentally crashed into tons of ships. Even Hera despised them, and had to be shown their true, helpful nature by Ezra. Spoilers for the end of Rebel Season 3 here, but Ezra's kindness and understanding definitely paid off. In the year 1 BBY, dozens of Pergil, including massive, ancient ones, came to the Rebels' aid and wiped out Thrawn's blockade over Lothal. They took out a lot of the Star Destroyers, but remember they are incredibly intelligent, and one latched onto the Star Destroyer that Ezra and Thrawn were trapped on and disappeared with it into hyperspace. As of yet, their current location is unknown, and the complete mystery of the Pergil has yet to be revealed. So that's it for its history, and the only cool behind the scenes fact is that the legend's history of the hyperdrive is quite different. It is suspected that a similar device was used by the Celestials in 1 million BBY, but most sentient species would have got theirs by reverse engineering those produced by the Rakata. 
Though no space whales were harmed during the rise of the Rakata's infinite empire, they certainly weren't benevolent masters. Also, a quick shout-out should be given to this cannon thing, which is only known as the Whale Ship, of which a whole fleet were produced by an insane doctor. So that's it for the Pergill species. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference material used to make this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout-out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, if Ezra turns to the dark side, he'll be known as Darth Ishmael. And the Force will be with you, always.